Prime Minister Narendra Modi to meet President Joe Biden soon. The dates and details being worked on. We tell you why PM Modi's first U.S. state visit is significant. Both houses of the parliament are adjourned after the opposition cries foul over Adani FPO issue. Hear what the opposition parties have to say. And two months after the thumping Aam Aadmi Party win in the MCD polls, Delhi is yet to get its mayor. Will the third attempt prove to be a lucky charm? This and more, the top angle gets you the comprehensive view of India right here, right now. The way India and United States ties have evolved in the last few years is a thing of envy for many. Now United States President Joe Biden has extended an invitation to Prime Minister Narendra Modi for a state visit this summer. The invite comes as India is hosting the G20 summit as it holds the presidency of the grouping. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has visited the United States seven times after being elected. And this will be Prime Minister Modi's first state visit, which is considered to be the highest expression of friendly bilateral ties between the two democracies. A state visit requires a couple of dates. Prime Minister Modi is also expected to address a joint session of the United States Congress and a state dinner at the White House. The dates are yet to be finalized, though. Prime Minister Modi has a pact scheduled along with the G20 summit. There has been a tacit understanding between the two partners, especially after China's economic and military rise. The United States has increased its partnership in India in order to counter Chinese aggression in the Indo-Pacific and the South Pacific. There are other key areas where India and the United States are working together. Well, now the visit also comes as the United States and India are working to share advanced defense and computing technology. This includes the potential joint production of general electric company jet engines. The plan, known as US-India Initiative on Critical and Emerging Technologies, was released recently. And there have been recent strides made in the artificial intelligence and semiconductor chip technology sharing as well. But let's take a look at as to why India and US ties are mutually beneficial for both and how over the years the two have collaborated in defense and other spheres of bilateral ties. Well, now India is a critical US partner in the Indo-Pacific strategy for limiting China's influence. The United States said it was okay with India purchasing S-400 missile system from Russia. Under the CATSA, the US made an exception for India to acquire S-400 for its own safety and security. India's role in the Quad is also significant in bringing emerging technologies, telecommunications, green shipping practices on board. In addition to the Quad, India and the United States are also part of the Middle East Quad or the I2U2, a grouping of India, Israel, UAE and the United States. India imported $21 billion worth of military equipment from the United States over the last decade, though in 2008 military imports from the US were virtually non-existent. In 2016, the, the United States designated India as a major defense partner and now India conducts its largest number of military exercises with the United States. And the United States is currently India's largest trading partner with annual bilateral trade in goods and services at around 152 billion US dollars. Not just this, India has also joined the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, showing its support for the US Indo-Pacific strategy. Technology is a key sphere in the U.S.-China international competition. Here, India and the United States cooperation has grown substantially, both at the bilateral and the multilateral levels. Moving on, both houses of the parliament were adjourned after the opposition cried foul over Adani Enterprises calling off its 20,000 crore rupees FPO. Usual proceedings were disrupted after members of the opposition had demanded a discussion on the latest goings-on in the house of Adani. Well, now Speaker Om Birla raised objections to the scenes of chaos in the Lok Sabha. Mr. Birla even asked the members not to make unsubstantiated claims and emphasized how important parliamentary proceedings like the question hour were. Yet, it fell on deaf ears. Ultimately, amid sustained disruption, the Speaker adjourned proceedings for a few hours at first and for 24 hours later. Of the thanks. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar too rejected all motions and adjourned the Rajya Sabha. The opposition has now doubled down and called for a high-level probe by a parliamentary panel or a Supreme Court-appointed committee, no less. 
nine opposition parties, which includes Congress Chief Malik Arjun Kharge, who is also, mind you, the leader of opposition in the Rajya Sabha, have filed a notice for discussing the Adani stock crash. This House do suspend zero hour and relevant rules relating to question hour and other businesses of the day to discuss the issue of investment by LIC, public sector banks and financial institutions in companies losing market value, endangering the hard-earned savings of crores of Indians. Proper discussion in the parliament. This is the stand of the DMK and this is what our leader uh, and the chief minister of Tamil Nadu wants. We want uh, uh, to make sure that uh, this is discussed and the government has to be res held responsible. Well now by the looks of it, the BJP is now having to face a united front composed of no less than nine political parties which besides the Congress includes the Trinamool Congress, the Amadi Party, Samajwadi Party, the DMK, Janata Dal United and the left. Next up, in December 2022, the Delhi Civic Polls witnessed a fierce battle between the Amadi Party and the BJP. The Amadi Party wrested control of the Delhi Municipal Body from the BJP by winning 134 wards. But since then, it has been acrimony as far as mayoral polls in the MCD Assembly is concerned. Now, a new date has come and MCD mayor elections will take place on the 6th of February. Nasty scenes from inside the house during the recent Delhi mayor elections. Scuffle over the oath-taking order, which soon converted into Amandi Party and BGP workers hitting and pushing each other. Many even climbing on desks inside the MCD Civic Center. And now, after two attempts, on January 6th and the 24th of January, for the third time, the civic body will meet to conduct the mayoral polls in February. Acting on Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal and Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sodia's proposal, the Delhi LG approved February 6th for holding MCD's first meeting for the election of the mayor, deputy mayor and the six members of the standing committee. So what is the procedure? Now, Delhi elects its mayors every year. Rules have it that the first mayor after the MCD election will be a woman. In the third year, the mayor must be from a reserved category. All 250 elected councillors will be eligible to vote in the mayoral election. The MCD is among the largest civic bodies in the world, with an estimated 1.1 crore people living under its jurisdiction. It comes second only to, to the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, which oversees an estimated 1.4 crore people. Now recently, Shelley O'Broy, the Ahmadi Party's candidate for mayor, moved the Supreme Court to demand the mayoral election be conducted in a time-bound manner. The jostle for power lies in the fact that the all-powerful body runs hospitals and dispensaries, manages the water supply and the drainage systems, runs primary schools, operates tax collection, among many other functions. Clearly, the mayor's role is a tough one, but an even tougher one is the choice. On that note, this is the end of this edition of Top Angle. Do check out the incisive news analysis and cutting-edge documentary streaming only on Newsline+. Thanks for watching.